Alright, so we're going to start with a very simple example of a steel beam. And if you have a steel manual or you can go online, you can find dimensions for steel beam with a web and flange. So let's say we want to model a W14 by 38 beam. You can see here that they give us basic dimensions of the depth, the web thickness, the flange width, and the flange thickness. So we can use these numbers uh, to simply sketch up a uh, section of the steel member. So let's keep in mind that the depth is 14 and an eighth, and the width of the flange is 6 and 3 quarters. So we're going to go into SketchUp and just start using the line tool. Well, actually, we can start with the rectangle. Just make the full uh, bounds of this section. So it's going to be 14, 1 eighth, an inch, comma, six and three quarters of an inch. And you see that the way I've written that, oops, 14, 1 eighth, six, three fourths. You can't move your mouse, but I'm typing in with the inch uh, character and also the comma between them. When I click enter, it creates that square on the ground. So now you can start sketching in the actual lines, the geometry of the piece. Um, but first I'm going to ask that you consider that even with such a simple shape as the uh, section of the, of the steel beam, that actually is symmetrical in two directions. So really the only unique uh, portion you have to model is uh, one quadrant of the section. So let's do that right now. Let's actually split this in half. So we're going to switch to the line tool, go from midpoint to midpoint, and midpoint to midpoint, and let's just get rid of everything else because we don't need to do any redundant modeling. Now we can take very simply the thickness of the web, well actually half of that thickness, which is going to be 3 16 and the thickness of the flange, which is a half. Let's model that here. We can go up here, one half. That makes a, a green dot right at the half mark. Up here we're going to go over 3 sixteenths. We're going to sketch that over until it snaps with the half inch mark and then bring the line over to finish the loop. And then we're just going to delete all these elements. So now we have an L shape, but if you flip that over and then flip it over again, you will create the whole eye. Before you do that, the first thing you want to do is double click. So you grab the surface and the lines, right click, and then click Make Component. Now when you try to select, you can't select the individual lines of the surface. You've created a, a full element which encompasses uh, all the individual elements. Now we can see that uh, the component is easily uh, copied and pasted. So let's Control-C, Control-P. Just put it right on its side here. And then let's actually right click, flip the lawn. It's the wrong direction. Slip along the red axis. Oh. Slip along the green axis. And now it's it's made the T. And now it selects both of these. Control paste. Let's move it up to here. And then let's slip along the red axis. Now we've made the full eye. So the thing about a component is you can still go to the original component and make changes here. Like let's say let's make this 3D now. All I have to do is select one of them, start extruding up, say like 20 feet or 15 feet. And it's changed not only this component, but everything that was copied from it. Even though they're in different orientations, they all get extruded 15 feet as well. So now I have what looks like a, a column in, in the W14 by 36 size. I can go ahead and even make that full thing its own component, just for easier uh, accessibility. Now let's start playing with this. Let's say we want to make a bay, so a post and lintel. Well, what we can do is copy and paste this again, sit this at the top, and then rotate it. So we're going to make a moment frame connection right at the top here. And then let's bring the same piece over the other side. Now we have what's essentially one bay. 
And we can take this whole bay. And we can start making many copies of it. So let's say that 10 feet. And that's 5. So we spent uh, quite a bit of time modeling just this. Let's say at this point, you realize you made an error in your calculations and you actually need a different member. Let's say you wanted a member which had uh, flanges which was just a little bit thicker. Uh, well, let's just go and look for something else here. Let's say you wanted a 14 by 43, which would change your depth, uh, which would change your width, and everything else is the same. So let's say you wanted to make those changes. Well, if you wanted to start this model from scratch, it would take a long, long time to get back to where you were. So the fact that we made components means that actually this change is not so hard. We just need to go back and get one of the very original pieces we made, put it off to the side, and then we can just double click on this component and I'll just edit this solely. We know that this length currently is 3 and 3 eighths. And actually, uh, for the new one, we want that to be 4 inches, which is half of 8. So all we need to do is add 5 eighths to this. So we can take this side and pull it out. 5 eighths. So now if you measure again, that's 4 inches. For the depth of the beam, it was originally 14 and 1 eighth, and we only want 13 and 5 eighths. So we're going to have to sub subtract 3 fourths off of this. Let's do that. I'm actually going to take this whole section. We're going to move it over three fourths of an inch. Now you may not have noticed, but actually, as I was making those changes, the entire model was changing a little bit, just by a little bit, to account for that change. And so, actually, now we have W14 by 43 pieces, and we can go and reorient these. Uh, placement a little bit, but essentially we didn't have to go back and remodel every single one of these pieces. If you frame your model correctly with components, then you can make simple edits after the fact without having to redo everything. So let's say once again, let's make some even more drastic changes. Let's say that uh, we want this to be very very long. And you can see that change obviously in the in the full model. Let's say we want this to be fat. Let's say we want this thickness. Theoretically increase. And so hopefully you can see now the power of using components. You, you break it down to the most basic pieces, it's like the, the atoms of, of a uh, material. And then when you change the atoms themselves, then the entire material can change. So definitely use this as your advantage. This is a simple example. Now we'll, we'll take the step a little bit further.